The Oscars are a week away finally, which is like really eye-opening that this award season just feels like it's dragged on forever. So I'm really praying that the Oscar season is earlier next year, but that means we're going to be talking about who I think will win at the Oscars next week. I've done my analytics. I've gone through all the boards and seen, and I have not watched everything. So some of these will be just lucky guesses, hopefully, or maybe I'll be completely wrong, but we're doing this in part because on the night of the Oscars, I will be reacting to every single nominee and that'll be a fun thing. So I always do it every year and I'm excited to see your guys' thoughts on that. I also just just got done doing a video called what if I chose the Oscars so definitely go check that out as well hit that like and subscribe button for more but you guys are here to see my predictions so let's get to it these are in no particular order but we are starting out with best film editing and the nominees were Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer and Poor Things I I'm going Oppenheimer all the way uh, I think it's just, it's it's year to shine. Typically film editing is kind of like the pointer to who's gonna win best picture. I think Oppenheimer, spoiler alert, is probably also gonna win best picture, but Oppenheimer's for best film editing. This is also the one that I would want to win out of these. Um, as a dark horse, I could possibly see Killers of the Flower Moon winning. Um, but that's like a dark horse race and at anything. We get into best international feature film. We have Io Capitino, Perfect Days, Society of the Snow, The Teacher's Lounge, and The Zone of Interest. Now, I think this one's just the obvious one. It's The Zone of Interest, and that's also the one that I would want to win. I have not seen all these, but The Zone of Interest is the one that I have seen, and I really liked it. I wasn't blown away like by most, but that's my prediction. Next, we have Best Makeup and Hairstyling, and the nominees were Golda, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Society of the Snow. Now, for me, I think Maestro's gonna win, but I actually would not have picked that. I actually think Oppenheimer or Poor Things should win. And you say, Zach, why would you choose Oppenheimer? It's literally for the scene alone where he's standing in the courtroom and he sees everyone's faces just going eviscerating. And the makeup in that scene alone is phenomenal. But also Poor Things was incredible with the makeup that they did with such on Will and the Foe and whatnot. So that's my choice, but I do think my show's gonna take it away home. And up next, we have Best Original Score, and it's between American Fiction, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. I want Oppenheimer to win this, and Oppenheimer's winning it. Ludwig's taking it home. That's just about it. And best Original Song, and that is The Fire Inside from Flamin' Hot. I'm just Ken. Anywhere else I be. It Never Went Away, American Symphony, Wahazi, A Song for My People from Killers of the Flower Moon, and What Was I Made For, Barbie. I want I'm Just Ken to win. I'm a big proponent of movies that their song in the movie is the winner, not the one at the credits. Now, don't get me wrong, love Billie Eilish. I think she's incredible. I think What Was I Made For, it was an incredible song. And to put it right at the end of Barbie is a big seller thing. I think that's the one that's probably going to end up winning. Honestly, if either won one, I would be happy, but I'm just shining more towards I just can. And I think there's a chance it wins primarily because Ryan Gosling will be performing at the Oscars. But so that's the dark horse. But I think what I, what was I made for is going to be the takeaway home. Then we up next, we have best production design, which is Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Up. Oppenheimer and Poor Things. I think this is a two horse race between Barbie and Poor Things. Personally, I want Poor Things to win and I also think Poor Things is gonna win, but do not be shocked if Barbie ends up taking it home. I think that's the dark horse and we'll have to see. Yeah, best animated short film, which is a letter to pig, 95 senses, our uniform, Patra Dima and war is over. I think War is Over was winning this. I've not seen a single one of these, so I can't comment on which one I would prefer that win. Next, we have Best Live Action Short Film, which is The After. Invincible, Night of Fortune, Red and White and Blue, and The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. Now, I have seen The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. I think that should win. I've not seen the others, but I also think it will win because it's gonna be Wes Anderson's first Oscar ever, from my knowledge. I'm pretty sure he has never won an Oscar, which is kind of insane. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he won something for Grand Budapest. 
Don't quote me on that. I'm not doing research. We're jumping into this. So we have Best Sound, which is the creator, Maestro, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, Oppenheimer, and The Zone of Interest. I mean, flat out, this should go to The Zone of Interest. Uh, it's the one I would personally choose. If there was a Dark Horse in here, it would probably be Oppenheimer, or maybe even The Creator, because the sound in The Creator was really freaking well done. But The Zone of Interest is literally built off sound. If it does not win this award, I actually think that is a legitimately biggest snub of the Oscars that night because if you had not seen the zone of interest if you do not have sound in that film it literally deters and takes away from the entire experience so sound is key for that movie next we have best visual effects which is between the creator Godzilla minus one Guardians of the Galaxy volume three Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning part one and Napoleon now I personally want the creator to win would not mind if Godzilla minus one won because I loved Godzilla minus one I also would not mind if Guardians of the Galaxy won as well I the reason that I want the creator to win, I also do think it is going to win, is because the creator had like the smallest budget out of all of these. It's kind of the underdog. Arguably, it had the best visual effects. So we'll leave it at that. I love the creator. If you have not checked out that film yet, you definitely should. Next up, we have best actor in a leading role, and this is Bradley Cooper Maestro, Coleman Domingo Rustin. Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers, Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer, Jeffrey Wright, American Fiction. Now, I think it's kind of gone back and forth. Paul Giamatti or Killian Murphy. And for me personally, uh, it's always been tough because I love both those performances. I also think Jeffrey Wright is like arguably like one of the best performances of the entire year. So let me say this. I do think it is Killian Murphy winning. It's my personal choice to say that I want Killian Murphy to win. I want Thomas Shelby to win. But I do think there's two dark horses here. One is obviously Paul Giamatti from The Holdovers. But I think that depends on how the night goes in terms of The Holdovers. Does it win more awards than it's expected? The second one is American Fiction with Jeffrey Wright. And Jeffrey Wright turns in his best performance of his entire career. I think there's a chance that we're gonna see American Fiction win a little bit more than expected, and he could potentially win. Now that's just a Dark Horse chance, just wanna put that out there, so if I am right, awesome. If not, ignore me. Now we have Best Actor in a Supporting Role. We get Sterling K. Brown from American Fiction, Robert De Niro, Cares of the Flower Moon, Robert Downey Jr. from Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling from Barbie, and Mark Ruffalo from Poor Things. I, I mean, this is the obvious one. It's Robert Downey Jr. from Oppenheimer. I want him to win, I think he's gonna win. I'd be shocked if he didn't win. I don't even think there's honestly a dark horse in here, personally. He's just cleaned up house and taken every nomination. If I were to give a dark horse, I think it would be Ryan Gosling from Barbie, but that's really all there is. That's where I get to Best Actress in a leading role, and we have Annette Benning from Nyad, Lily Gladstone from Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Holler from Anatomy of a Fall, Carrie Mulligan from Maestro, and Emma Stone from Poor Things. Now, if you asked me before SAG, I would have told you Emma Stone's winning this. But now I'm really 50-50 on who's winning this. And my heart and gut is telling me that Lily Gladstone is taking it home. And it'll most likely be the only award Killers of the Flower Moon takes home that entire night. And for good reason. Lily Gladstone gave one of the best performances of the entire year. When I watched Killers of the Flower Moon, I was mostly blown away by her performance and her usage of her eyes in acting and she is absolutely incredible. She tells a thousand words with just a look, which most actors have to scream and yell and be loud and bombastic to tell those. And she's a phenomenal. So I think she's gonna win. Dark Horse is Emma Stone and I don't care who wins this. I would be happy if it's Lily Gladstone. I'd be happy if it's Emma Stone. They were both my two favorite performances of the entire year when it comes down to the female category. So this is where I'm gonna go. Up next, we have Best Actress in a Supporting Role, and we have Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer, Danielle Brooks from The Color Purple, America Ferreira from Barbie, Jodie Foster from Nyad, and Divine Joy Randolph from The Holdovers. I want Divine to win, she's gonna win. Only person in here that I genuinely think could be a dark horse is America Ferreira, but Divine's taking this home. I'd be shocked if she did. So we have Best Director, and I think this is just like the most clear indicator of who's gonna win this, but it's Anatomy of a Fall, Justine Triet, Killers of the Fly, Moon Martin Scorsese, Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan, Poor Things, Yorgos Lanthimos, The Zone of Interest, Jonathan Glazier, and Christopher Nolan's taking it home with Oppenheimer winning. That, that, that's it. So we have Best Animated Feature Film, which is The Boy in the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, 
Robot Dreams, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I want Spider-Man to win. I think it will win. The Dark Horse in here is flat out Boy in the Heron because it's Hayao Miyazaki. <laughs> Honestly, if it won, I'd be like a little sad because I love like Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the best film that I've ever reviewed on this channel since I've talked about movies. But The Boy in the Heron was also pretty damn good and it is Hayao Miyazaki and I'd like to see him win a film that's not based in the United States. So take that as what you will but I still think Spider-Man's taking it home. That's animated screenplay, and we have American Fiction, Barbie, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and The Zone of Interest. Now, personally for me, I think American Fiction's taking this home. This is my prediction. I think a lot of people are gonna be going for Oppenheimer, but I think what Cord Jefferson did with that script was phenomenal. But I will also say, Dark Horse in this category is Barbie. Because Greta Gerwig didn't get the best director nomination, I think there's a chance that people might go, oh, let's give her script. And I think that could be a chance on Barbie winning there. Oppenheimer, there's always a chance. Uh, Poor Things is my personal winner. That was my favorite script, but I honestly would be really happy with either American Fiction, Oppenheimer, or Poor Things. I would be happy with either of those, even, even Barbie. Like I, I liked Barbie's script. The Zone of Interest, I don't really care for its script because I don't think the movie's script is really the strongest point of it also. Let's get into the best original screenplay, which the nominees were Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Maestro, May, December, and Past Lives. I think Anatomy of a Fall is taking this one home. I don't really have much more thoughts than that. Uh, I personally would want Past Lives to win. Uh, I think that was the best script in this entire category, but <clears throat> Dark Horse, The Holdovers. Do not count out The Holdovers. So, best cinematography, El Conde, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer and poor things. Oppenheimer's taking it home and I wanted to take it home. But I wouldn't mind if poor things took it home as well. I was a big fan of that. Thing, best costume design. We have Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. I mean right here, right now, uh, I think Barbie takes it home, uh, but I would personally want poor things to win it. Um, yeah, I, there's not much more I could say on that part. Best documentary feature film, which is Bobby Wine, The Pre People's President, The Eternal Memory, Four Daughters to Kill a Tiger, and 20 Days in Maripool. Now, I haven't seen any of these, so I'm just gonna say 20 Days. That's kind of the one that a lot of people are indicating towards. So I'm gonna go there too. Documentary short film, The ABCs of Book Banning, The Barber of Little Rock, Island in Between, The Last Repair Shop, and Naha, Naha, Nai and Y Paul. I probably just mispronounced and butchered the shit out of that, but that's the winner right there. Let's say. Now we're on the big title, guys. Best picture. Who's taking the night home? And the nominees, if you didn't know, were American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, and the Zone of Interest. Oppenheimer is my pick to take this home. It's also, out of all these films, my personal pick. That's what I would have voted for. But I'm gonna tell you right now, there is one dark horse in here, and that dark horse is Barbie. I'm not saying it's gonna win. I'm not saying that there's a high chance, but I'm thinking there's a 50% chance of it winning. I say that because there was such an uproar when the nominations came out, that Barbie didn't get best director, didn't get best actress, and it missed a couple other nominations. That uproar, I understand usually is just on film Twitter, but then there's people in the film community who I could see stray and kind of be like, well, no one's getting best director. Let's vote for Barbie for best picture. I don't think that's how it's gonna go, but there's always that indication that that could be the chance. And I wouldn't be pissed. I would love a shock like that. But I also think this is Christopher Nolan's year. And that's why I want him to win. Oppenheimer is such a grand achievement and I would love to see him win. He deserves a, a, a Best Director nomination. He deserves the Best Picture specifically as well as Emma Thompson, his wife. Specifically as well, Thompson, his wife. So that's where I think it's gonna go. That's where I'm gonna put it. But you guys leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thank you so much again for watching this, guys. You guys are really all the best. Tune in next week. We have two more Oscar videos. We're going to be ranking all the best picture nominees, as well as giving my reaction to the entire night. That'll that'll be fun. I wonder if anyone will get slapped or if anything crazy will happen. We'll have to see. But thank you so much again for watching this, guys. And of course, until next time, stay classy.